there are three incoming lines in all 120 volt AC systems, two for power transmission and a ground for safety. All appliances and wall outlets in the RV should have these three lines. Electrical hazards are silent and invisible. The two prevalent dangers are fire and shock. Fires may be caused by short circuits and overloads if the system is not set up and used correctly. Shock is caused when electricity finds an easy path through a person to ground. A short occurs when a hot wire comes in contact with a ground or return connection. This can happen when wires come loose and touch something or insulation is rubbed through. When a short circuit occurs, the circuit breaker should prevent any problems. To protect yourself from a shock, always disconnect the power source before working on any electrical device. If an electrical fire occurs, first disconnect the power source by switching off the circuit breakers, unplugging the power cord, shutting off the generator, or disconnecting the batteries. Be careful because the wiring may become very hot. Be prepared. Make sure you have a fire extinguisher that is rated for an electrical fire and know how to use it. Never use water on an electrical fire while the electricity is on. The goal of electrical diagnosis is to find the faulty component that keeps the current from flowing through the circuit as originally designed. An organized and logical approach to diagnosis is essential to repair the electrical circuit. Since electricity is invisible, special testers are needed to check circuits and components. The toughest type of electrical problem to diagnose is an intermittent one. Intermittent opens or shorts are usually caused by something rubbing or a component that changes resistance when it heats up. Corroded or loose connections are frequently the problem. Observe when the problem occurs and try to discover how to duplicate the situation. For example, does it only happen when going around a corner or over a rough road? What is the temperature? Does it happen early during operation or after running something for a long period of time? Sometimes, wiggling a wire harness or tapping a fixture will locate the problem. Once you can duplicate the problem, follow these test procedures. Operate the problem circuit in all modes. What doesn't work properly? Is it a complete or partial failure? Which system does it affect? When does it occur? Determine which components in the circuit, if any, still work. This may eliminate the fuse, switch, or wiring. Check the fuses or circuit breakers. If they are blown, look for a short circuit. If not, look for an open circuit. Most electrical failures are caused by these four items. The wire or component is not receiving current. The component is not grounded properly. The wiring is faulty. The component itself is faulty 